viewer discretion advised, what you're about to see is, well, a lot of carnage. That is all from a rod bearing. Welcome back to day three, you guys. We're in the last video, we took out the 700 horsepower Ford G63 out of the 97 GSX. Now, the reason we did that is because number one rod bearing let loose and sent a thousand metal shavings throughout this whole entire block. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be tearing this block down, seeing what all this damage looks like and getting it ready to get hot tanked and sent off to the machine shop so we can get it back and start rebuilding it. Now, the reason this is day three is because I only get about three hours a day to work on this and we have a deadline of two Two weeks to get this done because in two weeks, actually less than two weeks, we have a drag race that we're supposed to be at. It's called Import Face Off. It's one of the biggest automotive car shows that there is, and I haven't missed one in the last seven years. Last time I took the car out, it did 137 miles an hour in the quarter at 10.9 seconds. My goal for this time is to run a 140 mile an hour trap and hopefully be under a 10.5. Obviously, in order to do that, we have to fix this motor. So enough of me talking again. Let's go. Go ahead and start tearing this thing down and see what a thousand metal shavings inside the engine looks like. <laughs> I'm ready for this. So this is the oil pump here. You can kind of see that this pulley, which is the oil pump drive sprocket, it doesn't even move. I mean, I have to really turn it extremely hard. So I'm thinking something got messed up with these gears inside, but 100%, we did order a new oil pump. This is why. So we finally got the cylinder head off and well these are the L19 ARP head studs which they did a great job in holding the gasket down which was a Felpro perm which was a Felpro permatorque and I had no overheating conditions nor did I have any boost that was leaking past the cylinders. Now you can see by the top of the Wysco HD pistons there's a little bit of pre-detonition. That's a little bit concerning considering that we didn't see any knock on the ECM link but it's definitely there and it kind of looks like a little shotgun blast but the pistons themselves look like in really good shape so let's see if we can take off the oil pan then take off the pump and then actually take the rods out and the bearings and see what it looks like from there made a mess i really tried to not make a mess too i like i did everything i could so i wouldn't make a huge mess 
and lo and behold, coolant everywhere. Uh. So the last time that we tried to fix the rod bearing, I put a lot of that right stuff on. And well, yeah, it, this stuff is like cement, man. It's just not coming off and we're already damaging the pan. So what I'm gonna do is when we take it off, we're gonna make sure that, that we flatten out all the flanges so we don't get no leaks. But we're definitely gonna have to do some uh, doctoring to this oil pan after I'm done with this. Uh, yes! Dude. Sweet Jesus. Viewer discretion advised. What you're about to see is, well, a lot of carnage. That is all from a rod bearing. Oh God, that's horrible. In the pan, oh my God. Yeah, it's just as bad as it is out there. Oh man. Maybe you guys can kind of see that or not, but. That's horrible. Yep. More metal. It's, uh, it's more metal. It's everywhere. It's throughout this entire motor, so it's a good thing that we're gonna be pretty much hot tanking this entire thing. We're gonna be replacing the oil pump because, well, obviously, it doesn't spin no more. It's a good possibility that, you know, a lot of metal shavings like that got all inside the gears of the oil pump and that's why it's seized up. Which, again, no worries because we're gonna be fixing all of this correctly and won't have to worry about it. Now, just so we're clear, this is two and three. The rod bearings look pretty good on that one, which my assumption was that the number one rod bearing let loose again, which, well, would explain where all these things come. This is number four, looks pretty tight. Number one, there it is, number one rod bearing, as we thought. So, let's go ahead and take off the pickup tube and the 2G cradle, and then we're gonna be taking out the rods and then the pistons, and we'll see if, hopefully, all the pistons are okay, because that's gonna put a big damper on things if the pistons are damaged. Destroyed. Again, destroyed. Oh man, yeah, that thing took a beating. The crank, it's crazy because the crank doesn't look too bad, but on the edges, you can see where it wallowed out on the side of the crank. So that's, that's the main reason why we're gonna be replacing it because honestly, because I don't wanna machine the crank and run into the same problem again, or having an issue because that we machined it. I'd just rather just go buy a new one, especially when I'm doing a build like this, there's no reason to cheap out and try and save something that's obviously damaged. So the skirt itself on the piston, it doesn't look like it's in too bad shape. It looks obviously it got a little bit scuffed up, but it's nothing that I would be too concerned with yet. The pin itself looks like it's in good shape. There's no up and down movement. And this side of the pin looks pretty good. The side of the skirt, as you can see, is kind of worn off, but I've seen a lot of pistons that the side of the skirts gets kind of worn out. And of course, the top of the piston looks in decent shape. It's not cracked. And what I'm gonna do is take this to my machinist and see what his opinion is to see if it's still good. I think it's good, but you know, I'm not an expert. I don't rebuild motors for a living, but we'll see what he says. So we got the pistons out and all of them look pretty dang good. So these are the rod journals on the crank and they honestly, man, they look super good, but it's just this one here that's just not good. And while the crank spins over like butter, but obviously, there's a big chunk of metal right in there. So, these are the pistons that they look in pretty decent shape. Every single Wiseco piston that I've seen get removed from a motor, the skirts are always have some type of scuffing. I've always seen it, maybe the piston to wall clearance is just a little bit too tight. For those that watch the videos, you might know that there's a car gone and uh, well, it's not here. That's because, well, it's at a body shop. Somebody kind of rear-ended the Evo 
It's okay, it's not that bad. But she was at a stop sign and somebody obviously was on her phone, didn't stop, and somebody hit her. Now, unfortunately, it did about roughly $1,200 to $1,400 of damage just based on that because there's a lot of other stuff that got damaged, like the exhaust, the whole bumper has to come off, get repainted, and that's what the body shop quoted. Luckily, she had insurance, so hmm, thank God for insurance, man. <laughs> Name variants. Oh my god. Those things are horrible. What did we do to this motor? God. Luckily it didn't damage. Yeah, luckily it didn't damage the actual block because dude, look at that. That's insane. Look at you can still see part of the metal shavings that are just resting inside there. That's the copper pieces that you see. Wow, this poor motor. We'll fix it, we'll make it brand new again. For those that are wondering and that know about the Ford G63, you'll actually notice that I don't have any oil squirters and that's because I blocked off the oil squirters and I ran Allen bolts inside. Um, I mainly did that because, well, I saw some bad things happen about the oil squirters breaking off and losing oil pressure and damaging a motor. Regardless of that, it didn't even matter because, well, we spun a bearing anyways. This is the aluminum rod that we're going to be using. See how massive and girthy this, this thing is? So what was in the car was called Oliver I-beam rods. And honestly, they were, I mean, these things could take a beating. But that's exactly what they did. They beat the crap out of the engine too. And just by filling them, that's insane. I would say this is about twice as heavy as this aluminum rod. Now, for kicks and giggles, I want you guys to see what a stock 4G63 2G DSM rod looks like. You can see I kind of bent this one a while back, but look how tiny that is. That's about as big as my finger compared to that one. That is insane. Look at the size difference on this thing. That's actually really cool to see like a comparison versus stock versus 1200 horsepower, which I think they rated these at about, I wanna say 1000 or 900 horsepower. So we took all the pistons off of the connecting rods. They're held together by these little tiny C-clip that sits inside the piston pin, which is inside here. You pretty much just snap them out, and then this piston pin, which is, I believe is a 21 millimeter piston pin, slides out and the rod just kind of comes out. Now obviously we're not using these no more. Honestly, three out of the four connecting rods are still good. That one, it's no good no more. <laughs> so now that we finally got the block apart, 100%, nothing on the block no more. Well now we're gonna load it up in the back of the Duramax, we're gonna take it to the machine shop, we're gonna take everything we got, we're gonna get everything hot tanked, cleaned, measured, mic'd, and when it's all said and done, we're gonna be rebuilding it back here when it's ready. And then we're gonna be able to put it in. Well, it's day four, so we took the engine block down to the machine shop where they're gonna be cleaning the block, balancing the rods and the crank, and micro-polishing it to make sure that it's 100% good to go. So when we get it back in the next couple days, we can go ahead and start assembling everything. So while we're waiting on the engine block to get back, we have the cylinder head that's completely, well, it's covered in metal shaving. So we gotta disassemble this whole cylinder head and clean it from top to bottom, make sure there's no metal shavings inside it. Also, along with cleaning all the oil parts, well, we have a problem. I made a mess, a big mess. So before tonight ends, I have to clean all my mess here because, well, we got the Evo back. Now, 100%, we're gonna be getting the block back within the next couple days, probably, hopefully, tomorrow. So subscribe to the channel if you guys like the DSM content, and go ahead and smash the like button because, well, it shows YouTube I'm kind of a good mechanic. <laughs> just kidding. But no, smash it. I would, I would appreciate that. So, just like that, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. We'll see ya. Bye.